Let's get that party started. Or fire. There's something magical about being in a teepee when it's covered with snow and ice and you're sitting in front of a fire or starting a fire. This is so wonderful. I love this. I could be inside watching NCIS or Criminal Minds, two of the greatest shows ever created, along with Ren and Stimpy and Beavis and Butthead. But I don't have TV, so... Well, network TV, heck with it. I'm not paying those rates, so I have to settle for Netflix, which keeps raising its rates. But what have you, it's, it's necessary for life. You must have contact with outside worlds. Be able to watch NCIS and Criminal Minds. That is not the point. Let's talk about animals. I talked about wabbits. The spirit of the cottontail. Have the spirit of the cottontail. What about some other animals? I shall discuss deer. And I, and I shall discuss cats. I am a cat person. I am an old cat lady. As it were. I like dogs, but dogs bark and... Then you have to walk them every morning and every evening and stuff like that. And my job really doesn't allow for that. And so, you know, cats are quiet. They don't bark. You don't have to walk them in the morning. Sure, they poop in a box, but everything has trade-offs. But I think about cats. I think about their traits. And why cats, pet cats, only come in one size, size small. You might see a Maine Coon, it could be a rather large, small cat, but yet it's still small. Can you imagine having a pet cat the size of a Great Dane? We've all seen it, you know, when their eyes get all squirrely, pupils get big, they don't know you anymore, and they're in cat land. You would die. You would die. Because cats have certain features that separate them from dogs. Aside from having sharp claws, dogs and wolves are badasses. Don't, don't get me wrong. They're incredible animals. But when you look at the overall scheme of things, I'm sorry, dog people, I have to give I have to give props to cats. They have eyesight that allows them to see in the dark. They have night vision. And not like our night vision. If you've ever used night vision mono, uh, monocles, you know, monoculars, or in the case of certain military vehicles that have that night vision built into the periscopes, you know, i.e. the Abrams, you realize that you can't really judge distance. However, cats' night vision allows them to see <clears throat> how far away something is. So they've got the ones, they can see in one-sixth the light that humans can. That is amazing. They are crepuscular. They were designed to hunt in the dark. Not pitch black. Nothing can see in the pitch black except maybe a bat with so echolocation, but cats come pretty darn close. They can hear better than dogs. I'm not saying I'm better than you because I can do this and you can't. I'm just saying that cats have better vision and better hearing than dogs. And they can hear in the upper ranges beyond our, our sense of hearing. Their noses. Cats have two noses. Yes, they can't. They, can't, they don't have the nose of a bloodhound. They can't smell as faint faintly faint stuff as dogs but they're able to discern the differences between smells better than dogs because cats have two noses they have one on their face and they have one inside their mouth the jacobson organ that's why they make that that weird face it's kind of funny they jump on the footstool smell your socks they're not editorializing on how you haven't been listening to your wife and you haven't changed your socks often enough they're using that let me give you time to laugh at that They're giving you, uh, yeah, they're smelling with that inner nose within their mouth, the Jacobson organ. They have uh, whiskers all over their face. And it goes beyond just being able to detect what size hole in pitch black they can crawl through or allowing, it helps their balance too. But they have all those clusters of nerves at the base of those whiskers um, that allow them to see behind their back. Changes in air pressure, the faintest of breezes. They might be intent on stalking something, but they also know what's behind them. If something else is stalking the stalker, who hunts the hunter? Who watches the watcher? 
the cats know because they've got whiskers. And I have to give credit. I've seen 10 pound house cat hold their own against a much bigger dog because they have the, the claws and the speed, the ability to climb trees. Cats are amazing creatures. Just saying. And what can you take away from that? Having sharp claws, having the ability to defend yourself, having the ability to attack, having the ability to hunt, having the ability to know what's around you. We can catch up to cats because we have something they don't. Posable thumbs and... I'm sorry, cats, but the ability to create tools. Higher, higher intelligence, I'm going to have to say. Not higher wisdom. People have demonstrated over and over throughout history that we're dumb as puddles of mud but we have the ability to catch up to cats overcome situations using our monkey fingers in our in our brains absorb that now let's go on to deer and other game animals other game animals when you're walking through the woods you are a biped you are a person you follow rhythms Try this the next time you're out in the woods. Aside from when you see a deer, they'll usually bolt and then turn around and look. Well, I'm not going to tell you how to speak deer. That's up to you to learn. How you can st stop them and say hello and have them say hello back. Because they're not necessarily afraid of us. But you know what, what cues animals off when you're going through the woods? As quietly as you think you're sneaking, they can hear you. They know you're there, generally speaking. You can ambush them. Maybe they're thinking about something else. But generally speaking, just like the little kids that come here and they see the turkeys or the deer, what have you, and they, they try to sneak up on them, I tell them, hey, they know you're there. And what you're doing is you're talking to them through body language because animals are masters of body language and reading situations. That's how they make their living. Is that... They know you're there before you know they're there. And what you're telling when you're trying to sneak is that you're a predator. How you conduct yourself flags you as a predator or a creature that is not a threat. How you look at them. If, you're, if you are at the edge of the woods and somebody comes out of the woods and they're face onto you. You know, as deer know, as turkeys know, as squirrels know, as everything knows in the animal kingdom... You are focused on them. But if you're standing sideways and you're just kind of glancing and paying more attention to this, they know where your eyes are pointed. You're less of a threat. They're aware of the situation. When you're walking through the woods and you're walking like a person, there's a rhythm. They know you're a person. But if you stutter step, as I say, stop, maybe scratch and kick the ground, and then continue on, in an uneven rhythm, they don't flag you as a person. You know, how you conduct yourself, how you track yourself, determines whether or not they view you as a threat or even a human. Now let's get on to other things. I've been having fun, but I've also been, been serious in that. And do you know, and think of the person walking through the woods and being able to be flagged as what you are. Have you ever had that occasion when you're discussing something? Um, what kind of stove should I buy? And then you, you hit the Google thing on your phone. You Googleize it. I know it's an internet search. I know it's technically not a Google. I don't care. That's the world of man. The, the Googles, the Google gods out there, suddenly give you a lot of ads for things. Or... You're watching a TV show, and you want to know, is this true about Catherine the Great, or Catherine of Aragon, or Henry the Seventh, or whatever? You want to find some facts? You hit H, and then it says Henry the Seventh, Or you hit K, and it says Catherine the Great, or Catherine of Aragon. What the hell? Is the phone listening to me? It's like, no. Your footprints that Google heard knows what you're up to before you know that you're going to search for it. Because you have flagged. You have searched for other things They have that, that lead up to that final search for Catherine the Great. 
And so their, their uh, analytics, their whatever, their capacity to think, AI, the internet does think, figured out what you want before you want it. They know that you're searching for a Speed Queen dryer because of your searches, your patterns, your footsteps. And so what I have done, what I suggest you have done too, is on videos. And it's good to support other people, but there comes a time when it's like every wabbit for himself. Is that if you know that you like Bix, I like Bix, I'm gonna, I don't look for, for just for entertainment, because that's all it is, the best survival lighter, because I'm just doing it for entertainment. I know Bix are good, so I'm not going to continue on with that. For example, I'm not going to spend an hour just watching YouTube videos randomly. What is the best survival lighter? Because all, all of a sudden, it is uh, tagged you as, as uh, one of them, one of them survivalists. You know, I don't need to know, um, let's say, this or that or the other thing. I'm not going to bring any true examples in here. But you're flagging yourself through your searches, through the videos you watch, uh, through emails, the newsletters, everything. And so I, being like that person walking through the woods, have decided I'm going to not flag myself. I, I don't want Google to know me better than I know myself. I'm going to stop it at there. That's that thought. But I will say, I have wombat recipes. I know that aardvarks, when they're trying to escape a predator, will run in a zigzag fashion. I know the different kind of afflictions that snails get. The hell are you talking about, John? It's like, I have just taken the first of my stutter steps through the woods of the internet. And what I've noticed just in the week that I've done this, you know, if YouTube sends me a recommendation, I don't want to watch that channel. Don't recommend it to me. YouTube has no freaking idea what I'm interested in anymore. Just within the span of a week. And could you figure, figure what it's going to be like in the next month or the next year? Because I've stopped just watching videos for entertainment. If I truly need to know something, I will search it out. But... It'll be lost in a sea, sea of aardvark facts or wombat facts. That in itself might flag me as just a weirdo or somebody that's interested in trivia or somebody that's trying to hide something, which I'm really not. But I'm not going to give Google the opportunity or YouTube or anyone else for that matter because there are people behind that a chance to really know what I'm thinking. My thoughts are my private domain. And so I'm not going to just go out there like a really bad hunter flagging himself or herself. You know, I'm going to be more like the cat. Cats are stealthy. Cats are quiet. Cats hold their own thoughts to themselves. You know, take lessons from animals. Why not? I'm in a teepee. Now this is interesting, and this is just fun. You can draw what conclusions you made from this. Is that my father was a ham radio operator, shortwave radio operator. He was fascinated by radios. He could build, actually build radios. His ham shack, that's his little private room in the basement, had shelvings with vacuum tubes and transistors and amp, amp meters and wire and soldering guns and stuff he would literally build radios he was that of a mind and i think that's a good tradition to be up because shortwave radio you can quote me on this shortwave radio truly is the dark web of communication there is an ability and i'm beginning my journey sure you're saying this is just a cheap little bio thing but i'm a beginner and this is a good way to begin this is an eight watt transceiver I need to program it. I need to go to the computer and learn how to program something, which I can at this time, but I wound up, I've learned, my learning curve is, is on the rise. I've learned that you buy this thing and it comes preset with frequencies that doesn't do us any good because it's 
they're made in China, like everything else, except my bows in my coffee. You have to buy a cable, too, so you can plug it into your computer, which is rather benign. There's nothing sketchy about shortwave radios. It's a really cool hobby, and it is fascinating. Um, program it with frequencies like the National NOAA, National Ocea, Oceanographic, Atmospheric, whatever, Weather Channel, and other things which are interesting. And uh, I'm going to get my license, and I'm going to learn how to operate a shortwave radio. I might buy one that also I can, you know, listen to the airplane pilots taking off just for the fun of it at the, the airport. Why not? That's kind of fascinating to me, just, just listening. Um, and so that's a good way to do it. I'm going to AM and FM instead of to the Internet. AM and FM are old-time things that no one can figure out what you're listening to. You can listen to a Cubs game. You can listen to news. It's just fun. I remember when I was a kid uh, waking up or being awoken. John, get up. You know, you don't have time to put your pants on. Just wear your pajamas and climbing up a huge Norway spruce tree to set an antenna up. And antennas are cool because there's a a certain length of them that matches frequencies. I don't know. Don't ask me for answers, but I want to learn this stuff. I want to learn the ways of old. Um, what did Marconi know? This dude that lived a long time ago, a hell of a lot more than I did. You know, these are old skills that should be carried on. It's just like um, the Masonic... Oh, I, I can't give any... There's changes in the Masonic lodges too, but I can't tell you about that. Um... But the, the conditions, I can tell you the conditions for getting ham radio licenses are a lot lessened because we're dumbifying our culture than they were 40 years ago. You don't even need to learn how to do the Morse code anymore. I'm not even sure that there's a license that only allows you to use the Morse code, the beginners. Things are easier nowadays. Now, last thing, I was, listen, I was listening to this. Watch this. Channel mode comes from other parts of the world. So places... That was a little bit of FM radio. I was listening to a little bit of FM radio. And I was uh, listening... What the heck was I listening to? Oh, in these modern times, if suppose circumstances threw us back into a, a, a more beginning society when we had the farm and we had to know things, People, modern people generally, because they didn't grow up on farms like they did or 60 years ago, it's not that long ago, would be starting from zero. How many people don't know how to grow a garden? How many people don't know how to use, say, a chainsaw? How many people don't know how to heat their wood with, house with wood? How many people don't know how to do this and this and this and this and this? We might think we're smarter than they were 60 years ago, but we truly aren't as a collective. I know that you know, that I know, that you know, that I know, how to do things that the vast majority of people out there don't know how to do. People with college degrees that went through their whole pampered life and now are complaining how hard life is. <laughs> Could you imagine putting them back 60 years ago, 100 years ago? They would just be in the corner of their teepee. That's ironic in the fetal position weeping because they don't have a clue on how to do the basic things of, of people. But that's all. I'm going to take this, this time just to enjoy my fire. This is a temporary video. This is John signing off. That's ham radio talk for now. And I will bring forth interesting and new videos, mostly about bows. I'm going to go back to just wooden bows. You know, in my videos, maybe, yeah, disclaimer, maybe uh, talks about animals, maybe talks about medicinal plants, but more or less, I'm going to be that cat creeping through the darkness. I think that's a wise way to be. Oh, and last bit. When you buy your teepee, these are all made by teepee makers that do custom work. When you buy your teepee, and hopefully you get a liner too, this would be just miserable without a liner. I'd be so 
open to the outside elements. Ask them, how tall is the liner from the base where the, it's tied along that rope along the, the bottom of the poles to the top? If it is four feet, say, I would like to spend the extra money for a five foot liner, or if you could, a five and a half foot liner, because that extra foot, foot and a half will aid you greatly in your teepeeing experience when there is snow and ice on the walls. That's about it. From this day forth, take my advice. I don't tell you what to do, but I, I will make this exception. It's confused the internet. Find out what the best ways of cooking wombats are. Determine how aardvarks escape their prey. Figure out what diseases affect snails. Figure out all that weird stuff out there so you can take stutter steps through the woods so the deer don't know that you're a person. That is all.